Can you achieve realistic renders from Element 3D? Element 3D is a very affordable plugin for Adobe After Effects. It allows you to render 3D objects and composite them straight away using different passes. It is quite tricky to use Element 3D, but in this video I'm going to break it down and show you how to achieve realistic renders. Alright, so we're on the location and we're going to be shooting our live action plate with our Blackmagic Cinema camera. And we're going to be shooting raw so we get the most detail when tracking and when color grading the footage. So when filming you want to make sure if you're on set that you take note of what focal length you're filming. So in this case I was filming at 18mm but specifically if you're filming on a zoom lens you want to make sure that you get the right specific focal length for your shot. We also captured a HDRI map on the location which is essentially just three images with different exposures merged together. Check out the Punishers video on HDRI maps to learn more about them. Alright, so firstly we need to camera track our video and we're just going to use the built-in 3D camera tracker. Once it's done, we're going to select a few points and click on create a solid and camera. I like to create a solid just to kind of see how the tracking is looking. We can also check what the pixel error is. You kind of usually want to keep it at least beneath 1.5. Next, we're going to import our animation and make sure that you don't move the 3D model in the Element 3D interface because it can start slipping over time. We also need to add the ground to cast our shadows and for that we're just going to create a plane, scale it up and drop a material from the preset step called Met Shadow. In terms of the material for our 3D model, you typically want to use all of the textures options apart from the environment. If you have reflectivity maps, you want to make sure you increase the intensity in the reflectivity tab. In this case, I use 75%. If you have an illumination map, make sure to increase the intensity to your liking in the illumination tab as well to turn it on. Then we're going to import our HDRI map and make sure it is a .hdri file, otherwise the HDRI will not work. We're also going to have to change the gamma from 2.2 to 1. And then we're going to move our 3D model into the right placement. So let's copy the position from the solid, open group 1 or whichever group you have your 3D model in, open a particle replicator and paste in the position X and Y into XY position and then position Z into Z position. In my case I also rotated the group on the Y axis by minus 60. And now we're going to go into the render settings. Go to physical environment and enable show in background. Open up rotate environment and usually only rotate by the Y axis and then try to match the environment with your clip. Then let's open up lighting. Go down to additional lighting and turn the brightness multiplier to 0%. Down below it we have shadows. Let's enable that and change the mode to ray traced. And the last thing in the render settings is the ambient occlusion. Enable that and then change the mode to ray trace as well. If you see any noise with the ambient occlusion or the shadows make sure to add more samples and even multi samples if needed. And that covers the look for our render. But as you can see with all these added, our preview is really laggy. So we're going to isolate our element 3D layer and render it out at ProRes 4444 with alpha embedded. Now let's import it and add it to the same composition. Hide our element 3D layer, camera and any other layer you might not need anymore. Let's color correct our CG object. I usually start with adding a brightness and contrast effect. And you usually want to find a similarly dark spot on the shot and match the brightness to it. You can see that in the info tab. By default it's usually showing you the red, green and blue channel, which can also be very useful but in this case we're going to right click and change it to HSB, which means hue, saturation and brightness. And once that's matched, I might also add a curves adjustment to try and match the white balance of the shot. And lastly we're going to add a Gaussian blur effect to reduce the sharpness of the render. Then I'm going to pre-compose this layer and add pixel motion blur. And then I added my color grade with a very special plugin in DaVinci Resolve which I cannot say right now but a review is coming very very soon. Anyways I hope you guys find this video useful and make sure to check out Element 3D by Video Copilot. It is a very good plugin and hopefully with more of us using it they might do an update on it because the last update was I believe in 2015. And also don't forget to check out Visual Effects Pro for professional stock footage. Um, you can find our website in the links below and also for 15% off use the code below thank you for watching bye